So 2011 Jeep Liberty, you're saying, Travis, why are you working on that? You like old stuff, 40s, 50s, 60s. I know. This wasn't in the plans for my life. Short story. Once upon a time, last weekend, me and my girlfriend were up in Albuquerque for the balloon fiesta, the 50th annual balloon fiesta, you know, world's largest hot air balloon collection send off, you know, it was a good time. We were 50 miles outside of Tucson, engine light started blinking, car stopped, when I tried to crank it over, the starter smoked itself, had to have a good old dad come and pull us home, you know, put us up on a trailer and took us home. Dads have that effect, always coming to the rescue, you know. Be grateful for dads. When we got the car back home, put a big old fat ratchet on the crankshaft, when the motor was completely seized up. I said, how's that even possible? I just changed the oil, the coolant was full, there was no oil light, it wasn't overheating, absolutely no signs of distress, nothing. A split second, motor locked up, right on the highway. So why don't you come over here and take a look? And I'll bring you up to speed on what's going on with this Jeep. So I've already pulled the motor out of this Jeep. Did that on Monday. It's Friday now. Here's the absolute mess that it has created. Uh, so let me just tell you something. Before I took the motor out, before I took all the connectors off and all that, I went and got the OBD2 checker to see uh, what was the last code that it read before the time of departure. Well, the code was low battery voltage. But the main code that I was concerned about was it said cylinder 2 misfire. Now, OBD2 readers don't tell you what went wrong, whether it was a spark plug or an injector or a down cylinder. So the computer knew something was wrong with cylinder 2. It wasn't sure what. I wasn't sure what, but it showed no signs of distress. That head is cylinders 1, 3, and 5. I pulled the head off of the uh, motor where 2, 4, and 6 was because I thought, well, we'll get a look at number 2 cylinder. And here's the head. It looks beautiful. I mean, absolutely does not show much signs of wear everything is nice everything nothing worn all jacked up but cylinder 2 rocker was down here and we revealed something interesting see how that one looks different than the rest so this is all chingered up it dropped a valve seat down here and as that motor was opening that valve pieces of it got in here and uh, it got into the piston shoved the piston into the head and uh, locked it up so all these look good this one got trashed. Cylinder 6 and 4 look good, cylinder walls, and luckily the cylinder walls do not look damaged uh, on number 2 cylinder here. We just pushed the piston down about 10 minutes ago, <clears throat> and this is what the top of that piston looked like. You can see pieces of that uh, valve seat got caught up in there, and you can see where the, the piece got lodged in the piston, the piston went up against the head, hit the head, shoved that piece down in the piston, and broke the uh, rings. Ordering a new piston online today. So I have two heads. These are both passenger side heads off a 3.7 liter V6. This is the head off of this vehicle, and this is a head I pulled off of a uh, Jeep at a junkyard yesterday. They ran the 3.7 V6 in the Jeeps from 2002 to 2012. Uh, I forget which year this was off of, but it was in those parameters, 2002 to 2012. Uh, they all have the same block and head, so um, I think I'm going to be able to use this head on this motor once I get the piston, push it down in there. So I got my parts in from Rock Auto. I got the gasket kit. This is like the head gasket kit and the oil pan gasket. Um, and I got my piston in. The last thing we took out was the piston, so the first thing we got to put back in is the piston. So... Um, here's the piston rings, and here's the actual piston. I didn't know they were going to send piston rings. Uh, I bought some piston rings. I didn't know that it, that it came with a new piston. So, If you look on here, it says standard. STD means standard. A notch on it that points to forward. So uh, you always want to put them in, you know, how they say, with arrow facing forward, standard, meaning it hasn't been bored over, it hasn't been rebuilt. If you rebuilt this and you had them cut ten thousandths off, you would have to get a ten thousandths piston. But this is standard. I'm not boring it. So we're just going to uh, put the new piston on the old rod and run with it. The piston is held on with uh, like a spring clip. So that is off. Oh, no. I want to use brass and not a steel punch because 
you want to use a metal that's softer than the metal you're hitting, especially on engine parts. I think it's, it's coming. We got a new shaft with it, so we'll use the new shaft, I guess. What's it hurt? So I remember that you have to be just very careful when you're assembling these. So what I remember when I took it apart was this notch was at the front. So if you look, front marked F. This is how it goes together. Because you could put it together either way, and it will go together. But you have to put it together directionally. I'm going to use some assembly lube just for good measure. I don't even know how old this this is. We haven't rebuilt a motor in a long time. It still looks luby to me. So after I put this shaft through, there's two snap rings that came with the piston that you go ahead and put in so that thing can't slide out uh, either put way. Put that in there. Got some snap ring pliers. Should help us out. There we go. Heard it click. There we go. Now we gotta get the piston rings on. The first ring you usually put on, that shiny one right there, goes on the very bottom, and that's your oil seal ring. And then your two um, piston rings go on above that. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking the piston rings I have compared to the rings on the original piston, just to make sure what way they face, uh, how they go on there, so I know I'm putting it together just like how an original These is. rings aren't tough at all. This is actually... These rings are a piece of cake. Some some motors are real pains. First time I ever rebuilt a motor, I had marks on my fingers. looked like I was Freddy Krueger or something. You want to point the openings of the rings away from each other. Because if you, if you point all the openings of the rings together, then compression can get through. If, if one of the rings is facing that way and that way, the compression has to travel all around the rings to get out. Now that I got the piston and the rod, all that assembled, uh, we're honing the cylinder. So this is a hone attached to the drill. We're using Marvel Mist Oil as the lubricant, and this cleans up the cylinder, kind of makes it brand new to receive uh, a new piston so you're not getting old score marks on a new piston and rings and all that. Put some oil on the piston. Everything is facing the correct direction. So we should be able to ease it down in there. The rod bearing is in there. So speak now forever. Hold your peace. Alright. Here you wanna do you wanna tap it and I'll go underneath and make sure that it's going over the crank. See in there. Should be it. Yeah. The rod bearing kind of it shifted a little. So yesterday, um, we were able to push the piston in, get the rod cap on. They're torqued to like 65 uh, pounds, and then I was able to get the oil pan gasket on. Uh, I didn't have all my gaskets sent from rock auto they didn't send them all at once so i had to stop yesterday I was able to get the oil pan gasket on today we're going to start with the, the manifold gasket so this head remember is from the junkyard um and the exhaust manifold is not the same so i had to take the exhaust manifold off of the head i got from the junkyard and i'm putting the manifold on from uh emily's jeep you have to be careful to save the bolts because these two bolts are normal, but the other ones have like a, they're a bolt and then they have a stud on them with a nut and that nut holds the, um, 
heat shield on. So those four on the outside and the two normal bolts are in the middle. I don't have the head on there permanently. Um, I just set it on there yesterday to get it out of the way. We still have to put the head gasket on. Maybe Rock Auto should sponsor me. That'd be pretty cool. They're pretty convenient. Their prices are good. So if someone from Rock Auto is watching this, my email is in the description of the video. So these are the injectors off the head I got. The way these hook up to the fuel rail I think is a little different. So we're going to put, the kit came with, uh, the head gasket kit came with new O-rings. There's an O-ring here and there's an O-ring here. This uh, pushes down into the head. This is the old O-ring. Came off. Got the new black ones. Got my pick. Helps get it on there. And then there's an O-ring up here, but they're in the rail. Like there. Yeah. They're still up in the rail. Is there any O-ring for the rail? Or? I don't think so, but they looked beautiful. So it's Dad's idea. I didn't think of this. It was a good idea. Um, Vaseline. Just put it around the O-ring. Mm-hmm. Vaseline's pretty harmless. We use it for all kinds of assembly purposes. Petroleum jelly. This way. I think it's in. Feels. I felt it bottom out. Yeah. Sure, they're in there. I already cleaned this head off with our. Um, we got a soft wire brush wheel that gets gaskets off without hurting the metal, so I ran that over it to get all the gasket material to make it as flat as possible. Now we're running brake clean over it. I don't want any contamination on there when you're putting the, the head on. Okay, set it on our, our dowel pins, hopefully, there we go. Okay. So for this, when we took the motor apart, we wired up the cam timing chain to the sprocket and down here so that we wouldn't lose time so that when we put it back together, we don't, in theory, we're trying to not have to reset the timing of the whole motor. So we're going to undo the wires that we've tied and then try and turn the motor and put the sprocket on the cam and then we'll turn the motor over and make sure we have the correct timing. Yeah. up and get that bolt in there before something scary happens. We got the timing chain, timing gear on. And these guides right here, there's a guide here and a guide here. This black one goes all the way down here, bolts there. And then this uh, this silver one, uh, there's not two bolts. There's a bolt up here, it's like a T40, and then goes all the way down here, 
and this is your tensioner. This tensions up against it. This is locking it out to where it's not holding tension on it. Our wire trick worked uh, because when you turn this motor over, this is the top, this is the bottom obviously. Top, you got your two dark links timed right in the middle here. Cam gear up here, you see how there's a white dot there and then there's a white dot on your cam gear. That's lined up. And then this side was never taken apart and there's a white dot and a white dot and these line up. So we should be good to go to start um, torquing down the head bolts and putting this back together. So <clears throat> got the cam sprocket on, got the cam bolt on, got the head bolts uh, torqued down, cam bolts torqued down, it's timed correctly, um, head is on. So the last thing I'm going to do today, valve cover, this new blue valve cover gasket, the old one, it just peels out of there. Kind of convenient, it sits in there by itself and you just set it on there. It's the easiest thing I've done all day today. Things lined up. All right, tighten her down and then um, we'll do some more assembly tomorrow. So this big menagerie here is your timing chains cover. Um, it also holds your water pump. Um, so I got this seal kit. It comes with all the goodies to replace everything. So got to start off taking the crankshaft seal out. Goes in like that. A socket and hammer never did me dirty. So. Try and get it in there nice and even. Get our other socket and kind of. And it's in there, nice and even. And now the other side has the um, actual gaskets. You have an O-ring here and an O-ring here for your water jacket. And then you have a gasket here. I believe that's oil, I think. I think this is O-ring for the... Yeah, it's in there nice and snug. Okay. Nice and snug. He goes here. And then the last thing to do is I think they sent some silicone that goes all around this surface. There's no gasket for it. It's just silicone and you just slam the whole thing on there as a unit. So this is the silicone they send you put on this. Hey dad, should I put the silicone on the block? <coughs> Back this motor up a little bit. got it about perfect just enough to cover it all the way around A few of them started. I want to get it on those. There we go. It's on there. Yeah. 
Jad's cleaning up the water pump surface so we can put the gasket on and put it on the uh, timing chain cover. That harmonic bouncer can go on. You put some Vaseline around that thing with grease. You know, people talk about the old stuff. This is better. This O ring on here, this great big O ring on a water pump. Makes, it's actually kind of convenient. To me, it's better. Yeah. It's, to me, it seals better. That was the problem with old motors. That they leaked, you know. They just they just leaked, you know, and that was just a bad thing with them. And this, that was part of the complaints for, you know, customers complaining. And they, they went in and made things a little better. Okay, so this is ready, so you can go ahead and put your silicone on there <coughs> there's your water pump you got that black silicone or are you going to use the gray should I put it around the block I just put it around the block okay so the water pump's ready to go on what else we got no there's kind of a lone wolf bolt here, yeah. Is that right? We'll get these tight. We can keep moving forward. We gotta put the crank a harmonic balancer on next. Got it sitting in there, gotta tighten it. on there so what we have dad doing is putting on the motor mounts because it kind of cradles in there and um, it makes things easier when you already have these mounts on it also thank you guys for 20,000 subs thank you for a million total channel views your subscribes likes comments all push this channel through the YouTube algorithm to get us to new viewers so uh, all of that engagement really means a ton it truly helps all right about to set it in we got our positioned we got everything on got all the pulleys crank harmonic balancer idler pulley tensioner pulley water pump everything is on everything is ready so we're gonna try and set it in these cradles here see how they kind of notch down should be able to in theory theory just set it in there and start bolting everything up Jacking up something so heavy, so high, always makes me nervous because if that thing gives out, it is just coming down. You're doing absolutely zero about it. So I'm just glad that, you know, we have it set in there now. It's uh, in the cradles and it's not going anywhere now. And we just got to get the dowel pins lined up with the tranny and get a couple bolts in and we're safe. So the heavy lifting is done. You know, motor is in, safe. It's going to be a lot of tedious kind of labor after this, not so much hard and technical like assembling the motor. It's just putting the AC back on, alternator, all the connectors, radiator, hoses and stuff. All right. She's in. We got two of the tranny bolts started. We got the dowel pins in. So sitting in there how it's supposed to be. We're going to get this cherry picker out of the way. And then we can start plugging away, doing all the little electrical connections, finish doing all the tranny mount bolts and all that, hook the torque converter up to the flywheel and, you know, really just a lot of, a lot of labor and a lot of time. Okay, so today we're going to have the big push of actually 
trying to get this thing running. Motor is in it. I'm going to jack it up. I'm going to get the tranny bolts in and get everything bolted in underneath and then come up top and then it's just going to basically be a fight until dark of putting radiators in, hoses on, connectors. By the end of today, I would like to try and make this thing go live. That's the goal. Right now I'm tightening up the exhaust bolts. I'm using a pretty long extension and I think it's a swivel 5 eighths. Yeah. To get up in there because it's kind of uh, up there. There we go. Tightening up on me. Let's try the other one. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. And these bolts right here, they go into uh, the transmission. Uh, there's a piece, there's a big piece that goes in there that bolts the engine to the transmission. It's got like two, four, it's got like eight bolts that hold this thing in. There's 16s. There's that one. Got to do the other side. So this piece bolts to the transmission and the motor. So this whole piece here comes out as a unit. There's two there, here, two here, and two on the other side. Um, so this is all in. And the last bolt I have to get is up there. So while I'm reassembling this engine, make sure you like this video and comment and maybe subscribe if you're feeling overly generous. But those comments and likes and that engagement uh, pings that YouTube algorithm to say, hey, this is a good video. We're going to push it to more people. So oil up that comment section. Even if you just say comment for the YouTube algorithm, I don't care what you say. Say anything you want. The higher the engagement, the higher the views, the higher the ad dollars I get, which means I can make more car videos. But regardless of whatever you do, my dad and me always appreciate every view we get. So thank you for watching anyways. One of the tricky things we had to deal with when reassembling this was the AC system slash condenser that goes in front of the radiator. We didn't undo the air conditioner. We laid the compressor to the side and we did not take out the tranny cooler and the AC uh, condenser. So it took us a while to put the radiator back in because it's bolted to all that stuff and we did not want to pierce those pieces. Now that we got that back all together untouched and unbroken, I set the intake back on, put new gaskets on the intake, putting the connectors on the intake right now tightening it down and then putting the coils and the plug wires on. One thing I like about this motor is that everything has a connector and everything is shaped differently. So you can't plug in a connector where it doesn't go. So it kind of makes things easy on reassembly for you. It's almost dark. We got everything put back together. All the connectors, injectors, coils, plugs, everything is put together. All the fluids are in it. We're going to try and start this thing or at least see what happens before dark. Alright. You know. Do you hear anything? Fuel pump or anything? Hello. Check engine lights blinking. Squirting out where? Fuel? It was squirting out right here, but I pushed it on and it's stopped. Mm. Are you ready? Alright. <laughs> Sounds okay. If you can believe it, the check engine light went out. There's no oil light, so I'm assuming it, it built oil pressure. That. 
it's throwing off a little bit of smoke, but that's because of all the oil and stuff that's on the exhaust manifolds and whatnot, or fingers and whatever, so I'm not worried about that. I don't see anything leaking. I don't see anything that looks bad. Um, let's check underneath. I see a couple drips. <sighs> yeah, I think it's water. Check engine light went out. Running perfectly. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm so happy. When it was cranking the first time, I think it was cranking so many times because that cam position sensor was trying to sense where the cam was to know when to fire everything off. And once that cam went around a few times and it kind of got its bearings of where the motor was in terms of timing, then it fired off. That's what I think. But it's running good. Let's just hope it stays that way. We're going to drive around a little bit, test it out. Um, then we can surprise Emily with it. She doesn't know how far out it is until I get it done, so I'm going to try and surprise her. I'm going to throw it in gear and see what happens. Nice. She's doing good. Only light that's blinking is the seatbelt light. That's because I don't have it on. I don't see any oil lights, temperature lights, anything like that. 30... Got 40. All right. We'll bring her back home and um, maybe we'll put the hood on. Good morning, guys. We set the hood on last night, put the finishing touches on it. I drove it on the highway, did 75, did 80, no leaks, no engine light, let it set overnight, nothing on the ground, nothing. The only thing I know to do is let her rip. So we're going to try and catch Emily before she goes to work. So let's get going. Kind of make sure she's not outside yet. Yeah. She's still in her apartment. Okay, I just saw her open her door. Oh my god! Look at that! It's my car! Oh my goodness! You're so sweet! You're so sweet! Throw those away so you can go look. Okay. Too stunned to throw down her boxes. When did you finish it? Last night. Oh, I'm so excited. Just like brand new. <laughs> Happy to have her back. Oh my goodness. Feels like a brand new car. Just go ahead and start it. <laughs> That's better, huh? That's more like it. That sounds really good. Alright, bye, babe.